Let's start this video with a couple of questions to check your intuition. Do you believe that the court once made a person pay more than 2,000 euros for sending a couple of seemingly innocent emojis? Where are you likely to get poo as a good luck message before a job interview or exam? What does it mean if your Gen Z friend leaves a skull emoji in the comment section under your photo? And is it true that in Iran, you can get yourself into trouble by giving a thumbs up? If you watch this video until the end, you'll not only hear the answer to these questions, but so much more. Here is a brief overview of the next 20 minutes. We'll start with a trip 1.5 centuries back to prove that emojis are far more than just a passing trend of the Instagram age. Then, pay tribute to the sometimes obvious and sometimes hidden superpower of emojis. Next, a discussion about why emojis have gained global fame, but still can't be called a universal language. Moving on to a few recommendations for those who want to take this lighthearted topic seriously, at least when it comes to research. By the way, emojis really should be taken seriously. Being born as generalized icons, they became a symbol of diversity and inclusion and a way to express one's position. Our last stop in this video will be devoted to brand marketing. What are the benefits of using emojis in communications and how can you do so? As you can see, our to-do list for today is quite packed. Without any further ado, let's get started. Oh no, just one more thing. Subscribe to our channel if you don't want to miss any upcoming videos on creativity, marketing, and culture. Contrary to popular belief, the word emoji has nothing in common with the English emotion. It comes from Japanese terms, which mean picture and character. Contrary to another popular belief, emojis aren't a product of recent years. They actually tap into a long tradition of expressive visual language. Images and patterns have been incorporated within text since antiquity. We won't go that far into the past, rather a century and a half back. That was when emojis' ancient ancestor, the emoticon, appeared in the US satirical magazine Puck. This example of typographical art used a combination of characters to convey various emotions. A century later, emoticons were reborn in the digital age, moving from print to emails. As for the creation of actual emojis, there are a few different assumptions as to when it happened exactly. The first known set was made for J-Phone, a Japanese mobile phone. However, the most celebrated version is related to a Japanese designer, Sege Taka Kurita, and Japan's main mobile carrier, Dokomo. To get inspiration for the set, Kurita took numerous walks around the city and observed people's daily activities. You may wonder why both cases happened in Japan. The explanation is easy. The country has a rich national tradition of using images within text. While being popular, emojis remained a largely Japanese concept for quite a while. But a life-changing moment happened in 2011 when Apple added them to its iOS messaging app. That's when they really went global. But why do we actually need emojis? Quick fact, people think others understand their messages 90% of the time, but the actual statistic is only 50%. And that's where emojis come into play. If we compare a text with and without emojis, the risk of misinterpretation is significantly lower in the first case. A telling example. Recipients of a two-word email such as great work interpret the message as sarcastic 60% of the time. But a simple twist changes a lot. People want to use emojis to clarify the emotional intent, predominantly when they want to come across as positive and create a greater sense of rapport and intimacy in their texts or social posting. And that reflects in our psychology because more and more research is showing that we're reacting to emojis in a comparable way to how we react to facial expressions and other nonverbal pieces of communication. Our bodies and our brains are responding to them and viewing them as a legitimate form of communication because they are. Emojis allow us to add an extra layer of meaning, communicating beyond words and giving depth and emotional warmth to a message. The benefits of emoji apply to professional life as well. It has been noted that Zoomers are more satisfied with their job if their bosses use more emojis in workplace communications. 
Another appeal of these small digital icons is that on the basic level, you can speak them without learning. Contrary to unknown foreign languages, in most cases, emojis are understood cross-culturally. Much like traffic signs, they navigate you wherever you are. But this is both a pro and a trap. Despite being called the fastest growing language in history and a universal means of communication, some experts argue that emojis are none of that. They are used to complement our language, but not to substitute it completely. Also, what we mean by certain emojis differs greatly, depending on culture, language, and generation. This is not to diminish their value or to encourage avoiding them in communications. Just a mere reminder that we need to be aware of the possible differences. Let's cover some cultural ones. A thumbs up symbol indicates approval in Western culture. However, in Greece and the Middle East, it is interpreted as vulgar and even offensive. The next surprising example is the slightly smiling face. In China, it implies distrust or that someone is humoring you. This is because it's the least enthusiastic emoji among all the positive ones available. Other signs you should be careful with in China include an angel, which is used as a death threat, and the applause emoji, known to be a symbol for making love. The applause isn't the only hand gesture with various interpretations. In Pakistan, the open palm is far from a peaceful gesture. It actually means you are hurling curses at the reader. And across Latin America, a widely known metalhead sign is an indication of adultery. What's confusing in cross-cultural emoji communication is that the images can represent polar opposite things. For instance, the infamous poop emoji is used as a symbol of good luck in Japan. At the same time, this money emoji carries a negative connotation, signifying the loss of them. On this channel, we have a community of people from all over the world. Share in their comments which emojis are used in your country differently compared to others. However different in the interpretation, one thing remains the same. Emojis have come to play a significant role in our communication, and their careless usage may land you in legal hot water. Imagine this. You and your loved one are looking for an apartment in Israel. After exchanging a number of texts with the landlord, you write a message containing some optimistic emojis. But after a few days, you decide to choose another property for rent and disappear. However, the landlord relied on the deal and took the property off the market. So, the owner of the place sues for damages. What should the court rule? In this case, a judge noted that the positive emoji signaled interest, and so he awarded the misled landlord 8,000 shekels, which amounts to over 2,200 euro. Do you agree with this decision or not? Make sure to share your thoughts in the comments section below. And while you're thinking about this, we'll come back to possible emoji misunderstandings. Now to perhaps the most interesting ones, generational. There are obviously some differences in how people of various ages communicate digitally, but the comparison of millennials and Gen Z is the starkest among all. For Generation Z, the skull and the chair mean laughing, substituting the overused face with tears of joy. This icon has long been the number one most popular symbol on Emoji Tracker, a website that shows real-time emoji use on Twitter. However, the laughing crying emoji is deemed uncool by Gen Z. Both of these signify attractiveness. Commenting an hourglass emoji means a person has a great body, while a pregnant woman hints someone is so beautiful you can't help but want a child from them. A person wearing a cowboy hat or simply standing are emojis that were reclaimed by Gen Z as signs of awkwardness. At first, these examples seem illogical and random. Sometimes they are. The mentioned chair emoji started with a TikTok user at blank.antho as his inside joke. The joke is, whenever someone says something funny, instead of using laughing emojis, use a chair. But behind some random choices, there is an explanation. Gen Z entered the world of the internet when all the literal meanings of emojis were claimed by previous generations. So creative choices of emojis among young people is their way of carving out their own online identity and expressing their ironic view. Summing up, the internet's digital icons aren't a universal language, but rather a visual slang which, to avoid confusion, can require a dictionary. If you are overwhelmed with all the various meanings, we've got you covered. Use these two websites and you'll have no problems figuring out what someone intended to say. Continuing on an optimistic note, various senses attributed to emojis don't always lead to confusion. 
Instead, they can be fertile ground for creative solutions. Case in point, emoji to donate by the Food Bank and Rethink Agency. This campaign was based on two emojis with double meanings, the eggplant and the peach. They were turned from sexting symbols into a way of driving attention to a good cause. By sending one of the emojis, you could make a donation to the food bank. Here's how the projects team came up with the idea. Especially with like a food bank, uh, you know, we, we dabbled in, you know, pretty familiar territory of, you know, sad sort of like heart heart string sort of videos that show like empty plates um you know which didn't really feel to us at the time uh fresh for the category but we were just chatting uh leanna and i and and you know we we're talking about you know fresh ways that we could you know talk about the food bank and and uh keep it top of mind for young people and we were just literally, you know, sitting in the park one day and we were like, wouldn't it be funny if you could just text uh, an eggplant and, or, or a peach and uh, you would automatically uh, donate money to the food bank. And we were like, well, that's, you know, that's, that's a crazy idea. Like, and there's no way the client will buy that. Uh, so we pitched it and they loved it. They fell in love with it immediately. During their lifetime, emojis have transformed from generalized icons to international symbols of diversity and inclusivity. An update in 2015 allowed users to send emojis with different skin tones, making a Simpsons yellow the new default color. Another long-awaited change happened a few years later, when the standard set was replenished with female versions of all emojis related to professions. Also, today, emojis depict different types of families, from a traditional one of a man, a woman, and two children of different sexes, to a family of two men and two daughters, and many others. While remaining a fun way to express yourself, emojis also allow people to talk about their position. For instance, as Russia continues its unprovoked war in the Ukraine, you may see more sunflower emojis, a sign of solidarity with Ukraine, where the sunflower is a national flower. Last but not least, Yet another significant addition to the collection is the appearance of people with disabilities. When an emoji is added to the keyboard, it's added for everybody. And that's how it sparks conversation. You'll go, hey, well, what is this object? What is this food? What is, what is this animal? What is this, this person like wearing? What are, what are they doing here? And you were encountering a more diverse piece of the world than you'd expect, perhaps, from something as day-to-day -day as the emoji keyboard. However, the sky is always the limit and there are plenty of opportunities for emojis to become more inclusive. And now to brand communications. If you are a marketing specialist or a business owner, why should you bother to use emojis? Firstly, they provide a way to introduce a more human experience to online interaction. After all, in its essence, marketing is about talking to and with your consumers, and emojis allow us to do so with a stronger sense of connection. Secondly, to express personality. Emojis are one of the many tools that help faceless corporations turn into memorable and exciting brands with a unique tone of voice and overall character. Thirdly, to retain consumer attention, which many brands struggle with. Being a visual element, emojis make your content easier to comprehend in the conditions of information overload. Next, boosting engagement. 56% of brands saw an increase in open rates when email subject lines included emojis. There are similar results for the increase in likes and comments. With that in mind, what are the top six tips for using emojis in your brand communications? Adjust your emoji usage to the specific market your company works on. If you're like a fashion brand for, you know, teenagers, emoji and, and, and stickers are probably a natural fit and, and, you know, worth experimenting with. But if you're like a bank, uh, like trying to sell me like a retirement plan or like a funeral home, you got to think about it. Uh, you got to, you got to use emoji with, uh, with, with, with more intention. You need to ask a few questions of your brand um, before you embark on an emoji campaign. You know, is it is it 
right for your brand's tone of voice. Does it come off as authentic from the brand, right? Is that something that the brand would say naturally and organically? Am I contributing to the conversation with what I'm going to say? Um, am I being timely? Don't overuse emojis because it can feel insincere, irritating, or puzzling. Remember that emojis enhance your communications and highlight important parts of content, but they don't replace a message or a creative idea completely. I would never say use emojis, uh, like like you have to do it. I always say they're, they're true with anything, uh, like there needs to be an idea first. Emojis on their own are not an idea. Um, so if you're gonna use emoji, like, make sure you, you, you're kind of twisting it or, or, or giving it more purpose, uh, like, you know, uh, embedding them in some sort of like human truth or subverting them in a way that, you know, makes, makes their, their use feel fresh. Here's a great example. In 2016, before the release of the Deadpool movie, this banner appeared on billboards and social media. Now, it is not a random combination of emojis, but the spelling for dead, poo, l. Next, pick a couple of key emojis to associate your brand. Using them in your posts from time to time will make your communication more consistent. The most extreme example of a brand making an emoji their own is Taco Bell. In 2014, they filed a petition asking the Unicode Consortium to introduce a taco emoji. And after receiving more than 32,000 votes, the brand succeeded. Another case worth mentioning is McDonald's Everyday Icon campaign. They styled their burgers, fries, and sodas to look like emojis and photographed them. What's the point? To remind the audience their products are so iconic that even emojis are influenced by them. Get creative with the emojis you use. Monitoring new ones and looking for new combinations in existing sets. Emojis can act as building blocks for a larger message. Combining concepts can really help create a, a unique message that's positive or empathetic and is unique for your social content. I mean, you need to be authentic to your voice, but also you need to be able to twist what the emoji can do for you. Um, you know, if it's just going to be a punctuation mark at the end of a sentence, then it's not, um, you're not using it to its full potential. I think you, you need to try and, and figure out a twist on it. Sounds challenging? Rest assured, we've got your back. There's a tool called Emojisaurus that converts English phrases into combinations of emojis. And as for the new updates, you can always rely on already mentioned Emojipedia for that. Six, using the power of emoji isn't necessarily about using them yourself. Do you get what we mean? Marketing is all about knowing your audience. While researching your customers' preferences, you don't have access to their private messages. However, a lot can be learned by scrolling through their posts on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and analyzing which emojis they use and how. And now, to sum everything up, what is the future of emoji? Touching kind of on that inclusion aspect. I, I hope to see more diversity and more inclusion in emojis. I think as we evolve, so should emojis. And I, I think that that's something that is already happening. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm Italian, so I, I, I liked, uh, I really liked it when they released the like Italian hand emoji. I thought that was kind of fun. They're definitely not going away. I think they may evolve. I don't know to what, um, but I think uh, you know they're 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 going to help. You know, they're already sort of like breaking down like language barriers, like. Everyone, everyone knows what a heart represents. You know, everyone knows what a smiley face means. Um, so I think, I think, you know, if anything, emoji, emojis will just bring us, bring us more together. And we believe the opportunity to bring people together should never be missed. So make sure your brand uses emojis to build connection and express its unique personality in a creative way. Thank you for spending your time with us. In the comments section below, share your thoughts. If you could create an entirely new emoji, what would you come up with? We are saying our goodbyes for now, but if you want to see us again, just click the subscribe button. And as always, stay creative. See you.